Alright guys, welcome back to another tutorial. To D, what we're going to be covering is that other uh, option that we had a couple polls ago and it didn't win any of them so I thought I would just quickly do a tutorial on that after the other one got made. So let's uh, cover the combo locks. Now this one is an expansion of the ownership system. So if we basically place down like a block, a lock block right here, uh, we have our inventory. But if we basically have a combination in our hand, so we can do any kind of combination that we want. We just need um, some sort of unique block or item in the actual first three slots. And then what we need to do is we need to, I believe we need to hold a book. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold a book in our offhand slot. And that will basically set the combination for this block to be that item. Now, right now, at the moment, um, Eve. Okay, so it's set right now. Uh, let's grab the combo again. I think I might have messed that up. Maybe it's in the main hand for this one. So let's... Um, okay, so in the main hand, if we hold the book, then it will lock the uh, particular thing. Now, if we take that out of the combination, uh, it will basically say that we need to right-click with a book in the main hand and use slot 0, 1, and 2. So that's the slots that we need so if we wanted to unlock it again then we need the same combination now if we were to switch up the combination and try unlocking it it's just going to say that it's uh the wrong one basically and we need to basically put it in the right order now if we were to put it in the right order and unlock it then as you can see that's basically how we were able to unlock it now we can basically open it when it's unlocked but if it's uh basically locked and we try opening it and it will just say that we need to lock it now this is actually really useful when you're on servers and stuff like that and you want to protect your stuff so you can basically create a unique combination lock with pretty much anything in the world um, as long as the slots here are air uh, you can basically lock it how you wish and there is a system built in for uh, permission, I believe, if I use the name tag. And I am the owner or the person that places down the block. Then I can basically assign that to the owner. So let's just right click on that. And it says owner set to uh, name tag. So uh, yeah, so the name tag person, if that was the individual that has... Uh, is on the server then they would be able to access the um, chest and do all the fun stuff with it all right so there is another option there is a item bag now the this one's a little bit different it needs to be crafted you can't just quickly give the item uh, because of the way the uh, thing is how the variables are set up so in order to craft the uh, thing you basically apply the variables when you actually craft it where if it's in the inventory it doesn't have the variables so if we right click on it then you can see we can open it if we basically put the combo that we want in there then what we can do is we can use the book in our offhand slot and this is where the offhand slot comes in and Pretty sure it was the offhand slot. I'll have to take a look at the code one sec. Alright, so I figured it out. <laughs> My own code and I'm having troubles remembering it. Alright, so if we were to have just the item, uh, the, the bag or whatever in our, our main hand and then we shift to sneak and then right click, it's going to set the combo lock that we basically use. So in this case, it's already set up. We have the combo lock for the same uh, plank system as that block that we had over there and then if we want to lock it then we put the book in our um, offhand hold the item in our main hand and then have the combo lock um, that we just set in the same order in the first three slots and then we can lock it 
and if we were to try to open it it's going to basically say it can't be opened and if we basically put the book in our offhand again and unlock it and then we can access the inventory so uh, just to demonstrate that we can actually put some stuff in here and it will work as fine we'll just put some bricks in there and you can see the item updated so uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to lock this up again and then we're going to unlock it and actually let's lock it and then I'll demonstrate that we can't open it and then I will put the book and unlock it and put the book back and then we'll unlock it and as you can see we still have the bricks so that's basically how that works and uh, I'll cover the code in just a second but uh, now entities are a little bit different entities are uh, I didn't have enough time to do entities but it would be possible I think to do entities it's just a matter of figuring out a certain combination that would end up working like I said uh, as long as there's MBT data and um, even globe, like anything with an inventory, you can basically set up this uh, system for basically vaults and stuff like that. But uh, again, uh, it's completely customizable. You can use the permissions for pretty much anything. If you don't want to give particular uh, access to a certain block for some reason, may it have a specific GUI, not even just an inventory, maybe it has certain settings or something you don't want people to access, then you can also set up the ownership system for that. All right, so let's go into mCreator and I'll show you the code. All right, so there are a few different elements in this particular thing. So we have a item, which is the pouch and uh, the trigger. Uh, we have a crafting slash uh, when item is crafted trigger and what this basically does is it sets the owner of the person that's crafting it uh, to the display name so this is an item mbt data and basically we're just getting the display name of the owner or the person crafting it and then it's automatically set for the owner uh, the other things that are basically being set is the slots so we're basically leaving these blank and then we're also basically setting up the lock variable now if it's locked then what it needs to be do what this variable needs to be is basically um false this is, or pardon me true if it's true if it's locked if it's uh false then it's unlocked so by default we want to make sure that it's unlocked unlocked so again very similar properties with a block now the block has a one block placed by player and we're doing the exact same thing uh, no variable for slot ids for these ones getting the display name of the entity that places it and then we're basically setting the default state for that now for the block though uh when we actually place it we want it when block is placed by now this will allow support for the entity tag which we actually need for the variable itself so that's why I'm not using one block added because it doesn't support entities uh, the other option is when block right clicked and basically what we're doing is we're basically going to open up the inventory for the block all right, so then we have a couple other things in this particular mod. We have the inventory itself. So this is the lock block inventory. Um, I believe I used the same inventory for the item as well, but uh, you can basically customize it how you want. Uh, the other thing that we have is the recipe. So this is the recipe that we're basically crafting the item with, and I needed to add that to make sure that we actually had a recipe to craft the pouch with. And then the other two procedures here are the more complicated ones. Uh, this one is for the pouch. This has the actual script for um, locking it and unlocking it, as well as setting the combo locks. And this one is for the block. So let's cover the pouch first. And uh, the first thing that we're doing is, I'm just gonna minimize this at first. So the first thing that we're doing is we're going to test for the main hand item and then we're testing for the um, pouch, so the item that we basically want to uh, protect. Inside of that, what we're doing is we're going to be testing for two things. 
uh, we're going to first what we're testing for is ownership so if the the item hat owner is in the main hand of the provided entity is the same as the display name of that entity then what we want to do is basically run this script if not then we're going to run this script now the other option that it can basically do is it's going to uh, test if the entity has command permission 3 and that is equal to true if that is true then basically they are opt on the server or in the game and have access to commands and they'll be able to use that as they need so um we'll cover the basic stuff if they're not the actual owner first so there is a couple things that we're doing first is we're testing if the um, entity is sneaking so if they're sneaking then what we're doing is we're going to test if the well we're first going to be canceling out the event so this is happening all on a global trigger when player right clicks with item so that's how we're able to use the event uh, cancel event trigger for a global trigger so this is basically allowed for that as you can see down on the bottom here um, it says uh, cancelable now if it doesn't have that tag right there then it's basically this block can't be used and uh, this is only running on the server side so this is basically what's this particular trigger is being used for so we can cancel the event that will basically prevent us from opening up the inventory for the item now after that, what we're doing is we're testing if the player is holding the book in the main hand, or pardon me, offhand, and the other hand is the main hand. So that's basically where we're basically allowing for the book to unlock and lock the um, actual item itself. So if the slot is equal to, or if the MBT of the item in the main, main hand, so this is our pouch, is equal to the display name of the item in slot zero so it does that for every slot uh, zero one and two uh, these are the first three slots on the left hand side of the hot bar so if those are all true then what we're doing is we're going to toggle the actual item being unlocked or locked so if it's already in its locked state, it's going to be true. If it's true, then we're setting it to false, which basically unlocks it. If it's um, already, if it's not true, then what we're doing is we're going to basically use an else statement to toggle it to be locked. So this basically locks it. So that's basically all that's going on there. Uh, the other thing that we're basically doing is we're basically um, if it's locked and they do not have if they're not sneaking then what we're doing is we're basically just basically printing out a message and canceling out the event again to make sure that they can't open the inventory for that uh, particular thing if it is um, unlocked already then we don't need to cancel the event only when the particular um, item is locked so that's why we are testing if it's locked right here all right, so that's the basic unlocking and locking system for regular players. Now, there is a whole bunch of other script here for the owner. Um, there's quite a bit of it, actually, so I'll try to break it down in sections. So, again, we covered uh, sneaking. Um, basically, this is what the sneaking is doing. If they're not sneaking, then what we're doing is we're basically just testing if it's um, locked, if it is locked then we're canceling them from opening the inventory and then what we're doing is basically saying that they need the right combo to open it so that's all that is when they're not uh, when they're not sneaking if they are sneaking then what we're doing is we're canceling the event and then we're going to test for a few things so the first thing that we're testing for is if the offhand of the player's item or the item in the offhand is a name tag uh, if it is a name tag, then what we're doing is we're going to get the, um, we're going to set the MBT uh, for owner to the display name of the actual uh, tag in our offhand, um, name tag in our offhand. So it's basically going to copy over the display name over to the um, actual um, ownership tag so we can transfer ownership. 
Uh, the other thing that it's basically doing is it's going to um, basically run the same script as down in the um, sneaking for the regular players, this script right here. What this does again is it's going to basically toggle the on, uh, locked and unlocked state. Um, should at least, hold on a second. No, hold on a second. No, this isn't. Um, just looking at it. One sec. Okay, so this is a little bit different, actually. This is basically testing if there is not error in any of these particular... Um, if it's in the offhand slot of the particular inventory and if the uh, slots for the item in the first three slots are not air. So basically if it's not air, what it's going to do is it's going to set the display name for the, each one of those slots so we can basically store the actual um, names of the items now you could actually use different names for the display night uh, display names for those particular items and you'd be able to lock it using um more of a secure method you wouldn't necessarily necessarily need to use vanilla block names in order to do that if you wanted to call one item bob cat and dog you could always do that and it would still uh, act as a normal combination so, um, again, th that's what this is doing. It's basically just getting the slot zero, setting the MBT for the slot zero, getting the item in the main hand for the actual item that we're setting it to, and then we're getting the item in the slot of the hotbar. So zero, one, and two for the display name, which we're basically setting these variables here. Uh, then we're just basically printing out a message to let them know and then down here we're basically just letting our toggling the state This is basically only happens when the slot is equal to the items in the um, Particular order that it was saved to so you have to actually lock it first in order for it to be unlocked and locked so basically that's the exact script of how it works um, there is uh, the other one, which is the block script. Um, pretty much the exact same thing. Uh, I don't think there's too much difference outside of we're using block tags, pretty much. And yeah, that's about it. That's the only difference is we're using MVT block tags. Uh, the block takes can be found under here and block management here and item tags are all under the item procedures which are down here so there's those and outside of that there's the only difference we're testing for the block uh, we're testing for the name tag and the item and yeah that's all there is really to it uh, this is under player right clicks on block procedure global procedure but uh, again that's because we need to um, enable the the cancelable um, blocks so we can basically cancel out them opening the inventory so basically every time you see one of these uh, cancel events we're just basically making sure that the actual inventory is being cancelled from being opened and uh, yeah that's it so I will make sure to upload this or update the ownership tutorial and I'll add the script to that for you guys as well as the workspace and uh, you guys can use the script th that I created in your own tutorials so or tutorials your own mods or tutorials if you want to do a tutorial on it too that's cool um, outside of that, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.